Good afternoon. In the name of St. John the Evangelist, welcome to all parishioners and visitors who join us to celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. In addition, we extend a sincere welcome to all who join us digitally today. With respect for the recent surge in the pandemic in our state, and per both our government and archdiocese leaders' guidelines, we are truly blessed to be able to continue to gather to celebrate Mass and to receive the sacraments. With this in mind, let us continue to pay close attention to maintaining six feet distance from other households, following the marked entrances and exits, sanitizing our hands, and wearing our masks. Our Mass today is being offered for Giovanna Spitola. Please take time now to silence all cell phones while I read the marriage prayer. Please join in its intention within your hearts. Heavenly Father, through the powerful intercession of the Holy Family, grant to this local church the many graces we need to foster, strengthen, and support faith-filled, holy marriages and holy families. May the vocation of married life, a true calling to share in your own divine and creative life, be recognized by all believers as a source of blessing and joy and a revelation of your own divine goodness. Grant to us all the gift of courage to proclaim and defend your plan for marriage, which is the union of one man and one woman in the lifelong, exclusive relationship of loving trust, compassion, and generosity, open to the conception of children. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pause in prayerful silence and beg our God for mercy. Please kneel. Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom.
Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Please stand and let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would come down from the heavens with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, You are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming whether in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. The season of Advent is upon us once again. In our environment up here in the sanctuary around the church is very stark. It's austere. It is, in a certain sense, a desert spirituality. There's not a lot going on. We look at the banners, our purple, the color of Penance or penitence, mortification. As we know, Lent is also a color of purple. Advent is known as the little Lent. And it is a time for us to watch, to prepare, to become ready for the great feast of the coming of the newborn king. We are getting ready for Jesus' birthday. And we know not, according to the scriptures, the second coming. Certainly, we celebrate on December 25th, 25th the first coming. Jesus comes into the world and saves us from our sin. The second coming is a little bit different. He will come on clouds and power and glory. And we need to be ready. We know not the time or the hour. In fact, judgment can come to us at any time. We know not the moment of our own death, do we? 
We could die at any moment. Tonight, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, in five years, ten years, fifty years. We just don't know. And so we need to be ready right now. We need to be prepared. A mature Catholic Christian perspective means that I am ready right now. If there is a great chastisement, if there is a three days darkness, if there is a lot of trial and tribulation coming, or as the pandemic would say, we are already in it, we need to be ready now, irregardless. And that's why Advent and Lent is so important that we invite everyone to come to confession. It is a wonderful moment where we can come into the confessional, confess our sins openly and honestly, expose them to God through the priest who sits as Jesus' representative. And if the priest knows what he's doing, it'll be a moment of unconditional love with no, absolutely no judgment. It is about receiving God's merciful love, his healing presence, in order that we might grow in confidence and trust in God. When we share ourselves in our very worst moments, to deeply understand and know, deep down know, that God loves me no matter what is one of the most beautiful parts of our Catholic Christian faith. And again, hopefully the priest can exude that unconditional love, that infinite love, that allow God to touch the person who's confessing the penitent, to touch them in a way that brings healing and light and truth and goodness, and confidence and trust. So please, I invite everyone, come. Come to confession. It is a beautiful moment between us and God. And if we do so with a sincere heart, with a heart that is authentically sorry, sorrowful for the sins one commits, then we will know deep down God's unconditional love, that he loves us no less when we sin. It is rather us when we sin that love God less. Today Jesus tells us, watch, keep watch. We are called to prepare for this beautiful first coming, the birth of Jesus Christ, the newborn king coming into the world on December 25th. But we are also to prepare and get ready for the second coming. We know not when it'll happen. And because of judgment, it could happen. We, our, we could come before Jesus very quickly. Hopefully not. Hopefully we have many years to live. But we just don't know. And so we need to be prepared right now. That is a mature Catholic Christian perspective. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord is coming from heaven in splendor to visit his people and bring them peace and eternal life. Advent is a time of good news, the good news that God loves us and has sent his Son to save us. We pray with confidence and hope in his name. For the Church, that God, who is faithful, may keep her firm to the end, lacking for no spiritual gift and irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations, that the Shepherd of Israel, the Lord of hosts, may rouse his power among them, giving new light and strength to their leaders to make decisions of life, morality, and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have wandered far from God and hardened their hearts, that this Advent may bring them the grace to return to Him through the sacrament of reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are lonely or afraid, that the Holy Spirit will fill them and the kindness of others will touch them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may be watchful and alert, waiting for the Lord of the house to return, conducting ourselves as his good servants while we wait, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bruce Ebner, Catherine Tower, and all those on our prayer list, that God our Father, the divine potter who shapes our lives, may hear our prayers for them and return to them with healing and grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Rosaire Arel and all of our beloved dead, that the Lord may work awesome deeds for them, freeing them from all sin and making them worthy to stand in his divine presence in the glory of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And at this time, we'll have the special blessing of the Advent wreath. Let us pray. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Please be seated for the offertory of the gifts.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfill the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. As with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her beloved spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, Informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite those who are joining us online to pray together the act of spiritual communion, which can be found in the digital worship aid. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. 
and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Today's second collection will be deposited into our general second collection fund. In part, this outreach fund supports grants to service agencies and St. John's assistance programs. One of the agencies we support with our second collection outreach fund is Joseph's Coat. Joseph's Coat is a nonprofit free store serving poor and low income adults, children, and families. They provide clothing, personal and household items, books and toys at no cost. Thank you for your continued support of our second collection outreach. Just a reminder that Discipleship Sunday will be virtual tomorrow, live streaming on our Facebook page at 9.45 a.m. Packet pickups are available in the gathering space after Mass. Feel free to grab an Advent wreath kit as well as activities and treats from St. Nick if you have your young ones in your household. Then log on to Facebook for the true story of St. Nicholas, as well as the instructions on how to assemble your new wreaths. Thanks to your generosity, we have raised more than $2,400 for our annual Giving Tree campaign. This is approximately half of what we typically raise in non-pandemic times. So if you can, please consider giving to those most in need this season. Donations can be dropped off in our secure drop box or virtually on our website through December 8th to allow for time to process and deliver the gifts given. Check out our website and this week's bulletin for more information. Family discipleship and our confirmation classes will participate in a virtual retreat this coming Sunday, December 6th. While geared toward these groups, all parishioners are welcome to participate. Please contact Joe Block in the parish office this week for the necessary links and materials. Parish Masses for the Feast of the Immaculate Conception on Tuesday, December 8th will be held at 11.10 a.m. with the school, 11.10 a.m. with the school, and at 6 p.m. The school also will have Masses for the students at 9.10 and 10.10 a.m. that same day. And these will be live streamed on the school's Facebook page. The evening Mass will be live streamed on our church Facebook page. Check both the school and parish websites for links. As we continue to follow the direction of the Archdiocese regarding safe on-site gatherings, St. Anne's is canceling its annual bake sale, which was planned for December 12th and 13th. Please check our online calendar for updates to all events due to the COVID-19. We also are taking steps to ensure we can meet our safe capacity requirements throughout the Christmas season. As such, there is a new survey that will be sent out via email and available on our website where we are asking every parishioner to fill out, letting us know which Christmas service or services you plan on attending. As a reminder, the Archbishop's dispensation from Mass continues, and we will be live streaming the 4.30 p.m. Christmas Eve and 8.30 a.m. Christmas morning Masses. Just a reminder that next weekend is food collection for the poor. Food items may be dropped off at the designated table in the gathering space, anytime this week, and before or after Masses next weekend. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for choosing to celebrate with us today. Please come back and worship with us again. Please stand and let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls.